Myrmidons. Battalions ranged in armor with great-hearted Patroclus moving out now, the fury bursting inside them. Suddenly charged the Trojans, they swarmed forth like wasps from a roadside nest. When boys had made it their sport to set them seething, day after day, tormenting them round their roadside hive. Idiot boys. They make a menace for every man in sight. Any innocent traveler passing them on that road can stir them accidentally. Up in arms in a flash, all in a swarm come pouring, each one raging down to fight for home and children. Such frenzy seized their hearts, myrmidons pouring out of their ships, ceaseless shouts rising. And over them all, Patroclus' war cries, rousing comrades. Myrmidons, brothers in arms of Peleus' son Achilles, fight like men, my friends. Call up your battle fury. Now we must win high honor for Peleus' royal son, far the greatest fighter among the Argive fleet, and we who fight beside him the bravest troops, so even mighty Atreides can see how mad he was to disgrace Achilles, the best of the Achaeans. He closed with a shout and fired each fighter's heart, and down in a mass they launched against the Trojans, ships around them echoing back their shattering cries. The Trojans, as soon as they saw Menetius' gallant son, himself and his loyal driver, flare in brazen gear, all their courage quaked, their columns buckled, thinking swift Achilles had tossed to the winds his hard rage that held him back by the ships and chosen friendship toward the Argives now. Each Trojan soldier glancing left and right, how could he run from sudden plunging death? Patroclus was the first to hurl his glittering spear, right at the center mass, the fighters milling round the stern of Protesilaus's blazing ship, and hit Pyrechmes, firebrand who led the Peonians, the master riders from Amidon, from Axius's broad currents. Patroclus slashed his right shoulder and down he went, his back slamming the dust with a jutting groan, as companions panicked around him. Brave Peonians. Patroclus whipped the terror in all their hearts when he killed the chief who topped them all in battle. He rode them off the ships, he quenched the leaping fire, leaving Protesilaus' hulk half burned but upright still, and the Trojans scattered back with high, shrill cries. The Argives poured against them, back by the hollow halls, the din of battle incessant. Man killed man in the pell-mell clash of battle. Captains going at captains, brave Patroclus first, just as Aurelicus swerved in sudden flight, he gored him in the hip with a slashing spear, and the bronze lance head hammered through his flesh, the shaft splintering bone as he pitched face first, pounding the ground. And veteran Menelaus wounded Thaos, and Amphicolus went for Magis. Nestor's son on attack, Antilochus, struck Ataminius hard with a wetted spear, and the bronze ripping into his flank, clean through, he crashed at his feet. So, in a rush, each Argive captain killed his man. Wild as a storm cloud, moving off Olympus into heaven, out of a clear blue sky, when Zeus brings cyclones on. So wild the rout, the cries that came from the ships, as back through the trench they ran, formations wrecked, and Hector, Hector's speeding horses swept him away, armor and all, leaving his men to face their fate, Trojans trapped but struggling on in the deep trench, Hundreds of plunging war teams, dragging chariots down, snapping the yoke poles, ditched their master's cars, and Patroclus charged them, heart to fire for the kill, shouting his Argives forward, Slaughter Trojans! Cries of terror breaking, as Trojans choked all roads, their lines ripped into pieces, up from under the hooves, a dust storm swirling into the clouds, as rearing horses broke into stride again, and galloped back to Troy leaving ships and shelters in their wake. Patroclus, wherever he saw the biggest masses dashing before him, there he steered, plowing ahead with savage cries, and fighters tumbled out of their chariots head first, crushed under their axles, war cars crashing over, yes. But straight across the trench went his own careering team at a superhuman bound. Magnificent racing stallions, gifts of the gods to Peleus, shining immortal gifts, straining breakneck on as Patroclus' high courage urged him against Prince Hector, keen for the kill. But Hector's veering horses swept him clear.
Patroclus. Soon as the fighter cut their front battalions off, he swerved back to pin them against the warships, never letting the Trojans stream back up to Troy as they struggled madly on. But there, midfield between the ships, the river and the bleating walls, Patroclus kept on sweeping in, hacking them down, making them pay the price for Argive slaughter. There, Cronius, first to fall, a glint of the spear, and Patroclus tore his chest, left bare by the shield rim, loosed his knees, and the man went crashing down. And next he went for Thestor, the son of Enops, cowering, crouched in his fine polished chariot, crazed with fear, and the reins flew from his grip. Patroclus, rising beside him, stabbed his right jawbone, ramming the spearhead square between his teeth so hard he hooked him by the spearhead over the chariot rail, hoisted, dragged the Trojan out as an angler perched on a jutting rock ledge, dragged some fish from the sea, some noble catch with line and glittering bronze hook. So with the spear, Patroclus gaffed him off his car, his mouth gaping round the glittering point, and flipped him down face first, dead as he fell, his life breath blown away. Next he caught Aurelius, closing, lunging in, he flung a rock, and it struck between his eyes and the man's whole skull split in his heavy helmet. Down the Trojan slammed on the ground, head down, and courage shattering death engulfed his corpse. Then in a blur of kills, Amphiterus, Eremus, Epaltes, Telepolemus, son of Damastor, and Icheus and Pyrus, Iphius and Eupius, and Polymelus, the son of Argeus. He crowded corpse on corpse on the earth that rears us all. But now, Sarpedon, watching his comrades drop and die, war shirts billowing free as Patroclus killed them, dressed his godlike Lycians down with a harsh shout. Lycians, where's your pride? Where are you running? Now be fast to attack. I'll take him on myself. See who he is who routs us, wreaking havoc against us, cutting the legs from under squads of good brave men. With that, he leapt from his chariot fully armed and hit the ground, and Patroclus straight across, as soon as he saw him, leapt from his car too, as a pair of crook claw, hooked beaked vultures swooped to fight, screaming above some jagged rock. So with their battle cries, they rushed each other there. And Zeus, the son of Cronos, with Cronus' twisting ways, filling with pity now to see the two great fighters, said to Hera, his sister and his wife, My cruel fate, my Sarpedon, the man I love the most, my own son, doomed to die at the hands of Menetius' son Patroclus. My heart is torn in two as I weigh all this. Shall I pluck him up now, while he's still alive, and set him down in the rich green lands of Lycia, far from the war at Troy and all its tears, or beat him down at last at Patroclus's hands. But Queen Hera, her eyes wide, protested strongly. Dread Majesty, son of Cronus, what are you saying? A man, a mere mortal, his doom sealed long ago. You would set him free from all the pains of death? Do as you please, Zeus, but none of the deathless gods will ever praise you. And I tell you this, take it to heart, I urge you. If you send Sarpedon home, living still, beware. Then surely some other god will want to sweep his own dear son, clear of the heavy fighting too. Look down, many who battle round King Priam's city are sons of the deathless gods. You will inspire lethal anger in them all. No, dear as he is to you, and your heart grieves for him. Leave Sarpedon here to die in the brutal onslaught, beaten down at the hands of Menetius' son Patroclus. So she pressed, and Zeus, the father of men and gods, complied at once, but he showered tears of blood that drenched the earth, showered in praise of him, his own dear son, the man Patroclus was just about to kill, on Troy's fertile soil, far from his fatherland. Now as the two came closing on each other, Patroclus suddenly picked off Thrasymelus, the famous driver, the aide who flanked Sarpedon. He speared him down the guts and loosed his limbs, 
But Sarpedon hurled next with the flashing lance, and he missed his man, but hit the horse, Bold Dancer, stabbing his right shoulder, and down the stallion went, screaming his life out, shrieking down in the dust, and his life breath winged away. And the paired horses reared apart as raspy creaks of the yoke, the reins flying, fouled as a trace horse thrashed the dust in death throes. But the fine spearman Automedon found a cure for that. Drawing his long sharp sword from his sturdy thigh, he leapt with a stroke to cut the trace horse free. It worked, the team righted, pulled at the reins, and again both fighters clothed with savage frenzy, dueling now to the death. Again Sarpedon missed. Over Patroclus' left shoulder, his spearhead streaked. It never touched his body. Patroclus hurled next. The bronze launched from his hand, no miss, a mortal hit. He struck him right where the midriff packs the pounding heart, and down Sarpedon fell, as an oak or white poplar falls, or towering pine that shipwrights up on a mountain hew down with wetted axes for sturdy ship timbers. So he stretched in front of his team and chariot, sprawled and warring, clawing the bloody dust. So now Sarpedon, captain of Lysias' shieldmen, died at Patroclus' hands and died raging still crying out his beloved comrade's name, Glaucus! Oh, dear friend, dear fighter, soldier, soldier, now is the time to prove yourself a spearman, a daring man of war. Now, if you are brave, make grueling battle your one consuming passion. Find Lysias' captains, range the ranks, spur them to fight and shield Sarpedon's body. Then you, Glaucus, you fight for me with bronze. You'll hang your head in shame every day of your life if the Argive stripped my armor here. Death cut him short. The end closed in around him, swirling down his eyes, choking off his breath. Patroclus planted a heel against his chest, wrenched the spear from his wound, and the midriff came out with it. So he dragged out both the man's life breath and the weapon's point together. Hard grief came sweeping over the Trojans' heads, unbearable, irrepressible, he was their city's bastion, always, even though he came from foreign parts and a mass of allies marched at his command, but he excelled them all in battle, always. So now they went at the Argives, out for blood, and furious for Sarpedon, Hector swung them round. But the Argives surged to Patroclus' savage spirit. He spurred the Ajaxes first, both ablaze for battle. Ajax! Ajax! Come! Now thrilled to fight as before, brave among the brave, but now be braver still. Their captain's down, the first to storm our wall, the great Sarpedon. If only we could seize his body, mutilate him, shame him, tear his gear from his back, and any comrade of his who tries to shield his corpse, bring that enemy down with ruthless bronze. Urging so, but his men already burned to drive the Trojans off. And both armies now, pulling their lines tighter, Trojans and Lycians, Myrmidons and Achaeans, closed around the corpse to lunge in battle. Terrible war cries, stark clashing of armored men, and across the onslaught, Zeus swept murderous night to make the pitched battle over his own dear son a brutal, blinding struggle. Here at the first assault, the Trojans shouldered back the fiery-eyed Achaeans. A Myrmidon had been hit, and not their least man, dauntless Agacles' son, renowned Epigus. He ruled Bodean's fortress town in old days, but then, having killed some high-born cousin, fled to Peleus and glistening Thetis, begged for his own life, and they sent him off with Achilles, breaker of men, east to stallion country to fight and die in Troy. He had just grasped the corpse, when shining Hector smashed his head with a rock and his whole skull split in his massive helmet. Down he slammed on Sarpedon's body, face first, and courage shattering death engulfed his corpse. Grief for his dead companion seized Patroclus now. He tore through frontline fighters swift as a hawk, diving to scatter crows and fierce suck starlings. Straight at the Lycians, Patroclus, O oh my rider. Straight at the pressing Trojan ranks you swooped, enraged at your comrade's death.
Patroclus, giving a cry to Automedon, whipping on his team, Patroclus went for Troy's and Lycia's lines, blind in his fatal frenzy. Luckless soldier, if only he had obeyed Achilles' strict command, he might have escaped his doom, the stark night of death. But the will of Zeus will always overpower the will of men, Zeus who strikes fear in even the bravest man of war and tears away his triumph all in a lightning flash. And at other times he will spur a man to battle, just as he urged Patroclus' fury now. Patroclus, who was the first you slaughtered? Who the last, when the great gods called you down to death? First Adrestus, then Atenuus, then Echalcus, then Pyramus, Mega's son, Epestor, and Melinippus, then in a flurry, Ilysses, Mulius and Polartes. He killed them all, but the rest were bent on flight. 